Hello, uh, today we're going to talk about another Okta workflows template. Uh, this one for the remote sync use case. Now remote sync comes into play many times in a SIAM scenario where you have a legacy system or some external system that needs to be kept synced with your Okta platform. Uh, often this is a case where uh, a new user is getting registered with Okta uh, as the beginning of the user journey and then you need to propagate them to maybe uh, another system that's doing some type of uh, user storage, um, maybe marketing campaign or, or some type of uh, external pieces that uh, needs to be initiated with the Okta data. Now, part of the, uh, the journey here is to not only create the user, but to do all the other aspects of it, updating them when they have certain uh, types of uh, attributes that are uh, updated, then also doing user management. So if you remove them from the cohort of users that needs to be uh, sent downstream, that they are uh, automatically removed. And uh, those different types of operations that need to happen during those stages, either the creation, update, and removal, are all done in an automated fashion. Now, the way we constructed this particular template is that we're going to leverage an Okta group in order to define the cohort of users that needs to be synchronized. Uh, very similar to how you would assign a group of users to an application or some resource, we're going to use an Okta group to assign the users to a uh, cohort that will be uh, synced downstream. Um, because there could potentially be a lot of different um, profiles on your Okta schema, uh, we're also going to do some logic in there to see exactly which uh, profiles are being updated and then only propagate the update scenario in those situations where it's warranted. So the way we're going to uh, orchestrate all of this from the workflows perspective is that we're going to leverage the Okta event triggers. So as you can see here, um, we have event triggers for adding the user to the group. Then we have another one for a profile update on the user and another one for removing them. So you can see we're going to, within the uh, workflows cards, we're going to start implementing some decision points. So basically we've got to look for different things that are happening uh, on the user profile when the event gets launched and use that to make a criteria. Do we actually want to uh, create the user? Is there something special in the user's profile that's going to dictate a, a change in logic? Um, are there other um, factors that you want to put in, such as uh, if the user has been here for you know, an extended period of time, we're not going to launch a marketing campaign. If they have a different threshold, then maybe we're going to send them to a salesperson for a reach out or something like that. So we can have a lot of different scenarios that we can all incorporate uh, within the logic that is available on the uh, workflows platform. So in order to actually make all this happen, uh, we chose to break this down into a two-stage operation. Uh, one is to actually listen for the event and do some upfront checks. And another one is to call a child flow, which is going to do the actual work. Um, the reason it was broken up this way, if you could have multiple systems that you need to go downstream to, and they have a uh, slightly different logic, uh, you can actually call multiple child flows depending on some data that you might have had in the users group. So that this one child flow is really representative of maybe multiple child flows that you would implement in a, a real live uh, production environment. So to give you an idea of what's going on in the child flows. So if we're creating a user, now that we've decided that the user's in the right group and they're doing the um, uh, operations that you need, uh, we can come through into the child flow, read the profile, get a richer set of information, uh, figure out which of those payloads we want to send downstream, call the remote system. And then in this case, I'm actually writing some data back into the Octa's user profile so that we can keep a, uh, a check or a reverse link from the, uh, from the other system. Uh, this way, it can help both in troubleshooting and later on when we're doing updates and deletes, we actually have a unique identifier in the downstream system. Uh, in a similar way, when we get a uh, update on the remote user, uh, we could read the profile, do the selected attributes, and then call the downstream APIs. And then for the delete, uh, similar operation, read the profile, get a richer set of user data, uh, build the proper URL that we need to communicate with the remote system, do the call. And then here, we're going to update some more data to show that that particular user has now not been delinked from the remote system. So what I'd like to do here is uh, show you a couple of things on the Okta tenant. So first off, I'm going to trigger this flow. So I have a test user here, and I'm going to add them to a group called my API provisioning group. So when I hit that, 
Now that is the, the initial event trigger that's gonna cause the create user to be activated. And if I go in here, I can actually see the uh, implementation that we built in workflows. So you can see here, we have a couple of the different event flows. So the uh, event of adding the user, updating the user, then removing the user from the group, and then the child flows that we're causing here. So if I look right here, the add user to the group, we can see it's very simple. It's just looking here, make sure that they're in the correct group. And once again, depending on the group they're added to, you can actually choose multiple child flows that you could call. So you could have separate provisioning streams for each of your downstream external systems. And from here, we can also look at So this is the actual child flow that I'm calling to actually make the API call. Now in this right here, I'm reading the user and then I have a, a couple of select attributes. So in the user profile, there could be you know, 20, 30, anything in your custom schema. So only certain attributes need to be uh, actually downstream to this particular external system. So we can keep the data uh, as succinct as possible. Now in this particular POC case, I'm just using a, a placeholder API just to kind of show how the uh, flow would work. Uh, here you would actually create the API URL uh, of your external system and potentially um, put any type of security mechanisms that you would need when you're making your API request here. So in this case, I'm calling my URL, I'm creating the headers that I need, I'm doing the necessary uh, communications with my downstream system. When I get that back, I'm looking at the ID, and then I'm writing it into my uh, Okta user store here. So this is going to be your indication that the uh, synchronization went through. And you can put additional things in here as well, such as um, the time date that the synchronization happened, uh, or any other type of status information you want to retrieve from that external system. Um, we go back here and we look. So if I'm looking here from other events, so let's go back here for a second and I'll show you in the flow history. Remember I just wrote this, uh, executed this a few moments ago. So here I can see it was added to a group membership. I have a payload for this particular uh, user. I check to see if it's in the right group. It is, and then I'm calling the flow. And then if I look here and I look in the history of that, I can see same thing, uh, I have a successful execution here um, where I'm pulling the information that I need from the Okta user uh, directory and composing my API, making my request for the update and then putting some uh, additional data back into my Okta profile. Um, now, another piece of this would be to update something. So if I wanna update something on this particular user, I can edit this. And right now I'm actually pushing through uh, different types of uh, address information. So let's say I just wanna change this right here. And now this could be uh, in any application that has the ability to modify the user's profile. <clears throat> I'm just showing from the admin context here uh, just for simplicity. So now if I go back into here, I can see that I have my um, update user. I'm just gonna open that in a new tab. Once again, this is a, a fairly simple flow uh, that's gonna be listening for the event. Um, it's going to uh, do the necessary uh, checks to make sure that it was actually uh, an attribute that I wanted to, to, to look at uh, that's being chained. So I don't just uh, trigger on any event and send unnecessary data downstream to my remote system. Uh, and then eventually I'm calling my update user over here. And if here, if I look, I can see what happened in my flow history that I had an event. It was a, uh, a profile attribute that I care about. Uh, I, I constructed the correct uh, API and then I sent everything downstream. So you can see how the system here is going to just react to the events, call a, a separate child routine, uh, depending on the payload of the actual user, the user context, uh, execute the child flow, and then go through the, the various stages and the different checks and balances and things that you need uh, to ascertain exactly what your logic is that needs to be executed. So I hope this was uh, helpful to you and it shows how you can set up a very easy user sync with a downstream system, um, how you can use the Okta events to automate that process, and then how you can actually customize it for multiple types of flows by using the uh, uh, child flows
which are available within workflows in order to have a nice orderly system. So uh, thank you very much for uh, listening in on this today and uh, enjoy using workflows.